Hello everyone. I'd like to use this small appliance in a new location. But the original power cord is only 4 feet long and it needs to be 5 feet long to reach the closest receptacle. The electrician who wired this bathroom could have done a better job. Anyway, I'm replacing the original non-polarized plug with a longer polarized cord and plug. I'll start with a safety demonstration for anyone who doesn't understand the benefit of using polarized plugs. Okay, so for those of you who don't completely understand the difference between a polarized plug and a non-polarized plug, a polarized plug has one narrow prong and one wider prong and it can only be inserted into the power source in one in one direction. You can't reverse it by mistake because the wider prong won't fit into the narrow slot. Whereas the non-polarized plug has two narrow prongs. And I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of a demonstration here to show you how that works. So I have a power strip here. Right now it's turned off. And this white cord is a non-polarized plug. But I've marked it with a black line on that side there to make sure I don't get confused about which side is which. So on your regular receptacle, the narrower of the two slots is the hot side and the wider one is the neutral side. So you want it to you want hot to be plugged into hot. And so I'm using this lamp socket as an example which is wired to this non-polarized plug. I have the common side of my neat my meter plugged into a neutral slot on the power strip. So we'll turn on the power and touch the base on the metal bulb like this. And right now it's reading zero volts. But now what happens if we reverse the, pl the plug, plug it in backwards. Turn that on. And now we have, we'll see that we have voltage, 120 volts. So as you can see, the bare metal that's exposed on the, the base of this bulb is energized with 120 volts. And that's the problem. It's, just, it's a really bad safety hazard because you could be reaching in there up under a, a lampshade or something and touch that. I'm gonna turn this off so I don't shock myself but so what has happened is people who reach underneath a lamp shade to try to ch replace a bulb they have actually touched that and been electrocuted a 120 volt source in the household is the number one source of electrocution in the United States that's why we have polarized plugs Now this is just one example. There are probably other examples of appliances that used to have non-polarized plugs that are now polarized. And that's to increase the safety factor. I'll turn that on again. And you can see again on the meter, there's 120 volts on the exposed base of the light bulb here. And yes, it's energized. Oh, it's not screwed in far enough. Doesn't really matter. So there's 120 volts on the exposed base of the vault bulb here. It actually reads 121 volts. And yes, 
it's energized but you're switching the neutral side in this case because the, the thing's plugged in backwards. That's why it's important to wire that the polarity on an AC circuit correctly. It's not actually polarity like plus and minus like a DC circuit. It's polarity built into the plug for safety. Flip that around so that the hot side of that plug is plugged in. Turn it on and no voltage on the base of the bulb there. It doesn't matter how far you have it out when you go to contact, when you make contact with that socket, there's still no voltage. And you can touch it without getting a shock. I was, a ner I was nervous about touching it because you never want to be casual about electricity. So no voltage on the base that way. Turn it around. 120 volts on the base that way. Turn the power off. And that's why it's always important to realize what you're doing with the, the hot and the neutral side of a cord when you're wiring an appliance. Now some, some polarized cords, like this one has a polarized plug, some of them have a white stripe on the neutral conductor. That's extremely helpful. Then you know on the other end when you get to the other end, when you're looking at the wiring, that should be the white side. That's the neutral side. Of course, older plugs don't have that. However, I noticed on this one that there's on one side of this cord, one side of this cord is smooth and the other side, there's like a, serra a little serration molded into the insulation on that side of the conductor. If you were going to be installing a polarized plug on this, the side with that serrated edge should be your neutral. The smooth side is your hot, as it is here actually. It's only hot because I marked it hot though. <laughs> the smooth side should be hot. And in this case, well, I marked that side hot. Hopefully that removes some of the confusion that some people might have about the neutral and the hot side of a regular 120 volt two prime plug. So by the way, when it comes to wiring a light socket, the outer shell here, which is the part that the, the bulb screws into, it's the threaded part of the, bulb, the base, that's the neutral. That has the silver screw. The copper screw goes to the center point inside the base in the bottom and that's the hot and that is what gets switched off so there's no energy anywhere inside this socket when the switch is turned off silver neutral copper hot
Darn it, the cord is molded into the switch housing. So I can't just replace it. I'll be forced to splice into it. The plug on this water pick is not a polarized plug. So the trick here is to figure out which one of these is the switched hot, which one of these conductors is turned off and on by this switch. Now I'll just pick one. Got my own meter here fired up and I'm going to touch one of these windings inside the motor. And that didn't do it. So, well, this is all molded in, in one piece. So it appears I can't disassemble this at all. This is an extremely well designed mechanism. The switch is molded in. There's a coil here, a primary coil that's molded in, and it actually powers the motor via a set a secondary coil. That's how it appears. There's nothing I can do maybe. So I have a a test cord here that I've used for years. I simply used an old appliance cord. This one's polarized. And I put alligator clips on the end. Plug it into a terminal strip over here, a power strip. And the hot side of this should be the red alligator clip. And so the first thing I'll do is verify that. I'll take what would be the neutral side and plug it into the strip to bypass this side of the cord. Turn that on. That's 120 volts AC. So I know this one's hot, the red terminal strip is hot. Notice I turn off the power strip every time I I want to make sure I, I'm not going to touch it live because I'm not a big fan of electrical shocks. So now I'm still trying to figure out how I can determine which side of this is the hot side. Okay, I figured it out. This switch is a plunger. So I don't know how well you can see that. This is a metal contact right here. And when the plunger goes up and down in the housing, it either stays down, in which case that metal contact, it's a little metal spring, makes contact with two points. Or 
when you push it down and it comes back up, it's not making contact. So we'll try this on the GoPro as well to see which camera can see it the best. There's a little metal contact here, a little spring. It slides up and down inside that, with this plunger, slides up and down inside the, the switch here, goes down, down in this hole. And it's spring loaded. And this little, this little spring, spring loaded arm, detent, switches around and locks under there. And then when you push it down, it unlocks and releases and comes back up. So I can't show you exactly what I figured out, but I can show you on the meter that when I touch that top contact, right there I've got 19 ohms just like I have when the switch is turned on, going through both wires. Or if I switch to the other wire, I touch the top, it's infinite. I touch the contact on the bottom, I have 0.2 ohms. That means that this 0.2 ohm side is the, is the hot side. Because the other side, if I put the the ohm meter on this side. And touch it to the top. I'm reading 19.7 ohms again. That, that means I'm reading resistance through the coil. So I'll show you that again right there. That's the resistance through the coil. And if I switch to the other side, the other conductor here, and touch the lower contact inside there, in the, inside the assembly, I get 0.2 ohms. So, assuming I can reassemble this switch correctly, this side will be the switch side. This is the side that loses contact, and then this side will be the neutral side. That's the side that is always in contact with the coil. So I twisted that under so I'd remember that's the neutral side. This is the hot side. And now I need to reassemble this plunger, which is spring-loaded. And hopefully I can get this all back together the way it needs to be. And if I put the ohmmeter on that, I should read the switch going on and off and, and reading the 19.7 ohms again. Nineteen point seven off. Nineteen point seven open. I don't know where I got this cord. It's been around a while. Had it in my uh, electrical junk storage. But it's the right size and it's gonna work perfectly to extend this cord out. 
I need this to be about five foot two. Whereas the original one was just over four feet. Now it looks like there's some serrations molded into this side. So I believe that's going to be the neutral. I believe isn't good enough. I'm going to have to ring it out with the ohm meter just to make sure. This is a polarized plug, so neutral is the wide, the wide one. And right here. Yep, yeah, that's the neutral. So that will connect onto here. I don't have a more appropriate connector handy, so I'm using an insulated butt connector and cutting it in two. These certainly make strong connections. Although, they're a little bit too electrically exposed. Got a splice cap here, a couple of splice caps. I'm just going to fill them with RTV and use them to seal these crimp lugs. Keep any water out of there that I can.
Okay, now I've just got to let those set up. Probably takes uh, 24 hours, so I'll be back later. It's not 24 hours yet, but these seem to be uh, pretty cured. The RTV is firm and not sticky. Test it out. There are only two screws holding this together. 